what is Jesus saying? He's saying when this, when the comforter that I've promised to send unto you will come unto you, he will teach you. He will remind you. He will guide you. He will hear. And whatsoever he hears, he will say unto you. Am I adding anything to the words of Jesus or is this what Jesus said? Don't worry. I don't believe in the Trinity. I'm not teaching you the Trinity. I'm not. But I just want us to understand the scriptures. This is what Jesus is saying. Let us not change it. Let us not add to it. Let's not take from it. Let's understand it. You with me? So it seems that Jesus is presenting the spirit as a person who will teach, who will guide, who will lead, who will remind you of things that the spirit hears. He will hear things and whatsoever he hears, he will say unto you. Okay, I'm aware that if you keep reading in the conversation Jesus speaking when he gets to John chapter 16, he says that I've spoke, these things I've spoken unto you in parables. That's taken. Jesus was speaking in parables. He wasn't speaking in the first person. He was speaking in parables. I understand. But how was he presenting the comforter, the spirit? As an influence, a power, or as a person? I think so far he's presenting the spirit as a person. But let us, I want us to keep going and see what else we read about Jesus. Now, notice what he said here. He said that the spirit, whatsoever he hears, he will speak. So this comforter that will come unto you, whatsoever he hears from God, he will say unto you. Notice what Jesus said about himself when he was here on earth. In John chapter 12, verse 49, he says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what, what I should speak. In chapter 8, verse 26, he says, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. So when Jesus was talking about himself, he says, listen, the words, when he was here on earth, he says, that, as a person in flesh, that is, he's saying, the words that I speak unto you, they're not mine. Whatsoever I hear from my father, I will say to you. Is that what he said? Then in John 14, when he is talking about the comforter that is to come, he says, listen, the comforter that is coming, that will come, he will remind you, he will teach you whatsoever he hears, that he will say. Yes? Jesus was a person in flesh, and the comforter that he's talking about seems to be a person. I haven't touched on the identity of the comforter yet. Don't jump to conclusions. You with me? We're just reading and understanding. That's all what we're doing. Okay, now, I want us to jump from what Jesus said about the comforter, about the spirit, and I want us to get into the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts is, it describes to us how the disciples lived, what they did, what they heard, their experience, and that it describes when they received that comforter and, and so forth. So I want us to examine the book of Acts. But before we get there, I want us to see one thing about the spirit. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13. We'll begin reading there. It says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of God, save the Spirit of God which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. There's a, a thought being portrayed here. Usually we quote this passage, especially verse 11, where it says, compares the relationship between God and his spirit with the relationship between man and his spirit, right? We've done that many times. That just like the Spirit of God knows the things of God, so the Spirit of man knows the things of man. But the author, all what he wants to get to us and tell us is that the Holy Spirit is teaching us. But to do that, he said, the Spirit searches the deep things of God, meaning the Spirit knows the thoughts of God. Then he says, he compared man and his spirit with God and his spirit. Then he says, we receive the spirit of God, the same spirit that knows the things of God. And then he says, the spirit teaches us. 
In other words, what he's saying, that the Spirit knows what God knows. Yes? Because when you receive the Spirit, you are receiving what God wants you to hear and to know. In this passage, I believe Paul unlocked what Jesus said, uh, where, where he said that whatsoever the Spirit hears, he will say unto you. Why is that? Because the Spirit knows the thoughts of God, knows the minds of God. When you receive the Spirit, you receive what God wants you to receive. We'll get keep clearer as we keep going. But then he goes on, verse 14 to, to 16. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now notice he said we receive the Spirit of God. And as a conclusion of that, he said we have the mind of Christ. Why didn't he say we have the mind of the Spirit like he said in, in Romans 8? Because in his mind, as we will find out later on, the Spirit, the Comforter that you receive is none else than Jesus Christ. When you receive the Spirit, you have the mind of Christ. You have Jesus Christ. We will see that as it unfolds. 